Hello, Dr. Lee Barrett. Hello. So this is Lee Barrett from Lancaster Theological Seminary. And how long have you been there, Lee? Uh, 26 years. 26 years. And I'm Jonette Gay, the pastor of Otterbein United Methodist. And I wanted to hear a word from you about Henry Nowen's theology of stewardship. It fascinates me because he seems to be so otherworldly, and I don't think of him as being a pragmatist. So could you give us a word about Henry Nowen and money, or Henry Nowen and stewardship? Yes, and, and, and you're right. It was very shocking that uh, Henry Nowen, who was a major practitioner and theoretician of spirituality uh, from the 70s, the 80s, and 90s, uh, Roman Catholic priest, popular with both Protestants and Catholics, uh, who is known for his otherworldliness and his his holiness. He, I was a student of his. He insisted on living in the dorms with his students because he thought that anybody engaged in any kind of ministry should share the life of the people to whom he was ministering. So he shared our communal bathroom, and on Saturday mornings, after a hard night of partying Friday night, we'd get up, go to the bathroom, and there would be Henry brushing his teeth, and all the rest of us would just leave and say, we can't take this much sanctity this early in the morning with, before <laughs> we've had coffee, because he was just radiating goodness. He probably could not fill out his income tax reforms because he was so oblivious to everything economic. <laughs> He made a lot of money uh, on his books and lectures on spirituality, but he gave it all away, and he never knew what was in his bank account. So it was an anomaly that he would uh, write uh, a book and, and, and teach and give lectures on the spirituality of stewardship. And he was troubled by the fact that that was one of the practices of the church raising money for the church that most folks seem to be very shy uh, about and even frightened of. And he, he always wondered why that was, why, spirit, why stewardship and asking people for money if you're on the soliciting side or giving money if you're on the donor side, why that was uh, such a forbidden topic and uh, uh, was so troubling for people. So his diagnosis was that people shy away from either, either the asking or the giving in a stewardship campaign because they're afraid. Um, and his, his, the next step in his reflection was, well, what is it that people are afraid of uh, in, in regard to stewardship? And his answer was, they're afraid of admitting their vulnerability on both sides. If you're on the asking side, if you're, you're a part of a stewardship campaign and you're one of the solicitors, uh, you're afraid that you'll be rebuffed, that people will look at you and say, oh, this is just like a Jehovah's Witness um, who's trying to get their hands in my pocket and they are being nice to me just because they feel obligated to do so in order to put me off guard and get money from me. So people are afraid that that's what the other is thinking. Uh, that, that, and, and that if you show up uh, with, a, with asking for a, a, a pledge to the congregation, that people won't like you, that they'll be suspicious of you. And even worse, that if they don't pledge enough that uh, that means that they don't value you or your congregation's mission and vision. So people are afraid of being devalued, uh, be, being regarded with suspicion and animosity, and therefore they're reluctant to ask. Maybe afraid of rejection? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and the rejection is, if I'm rejected, that must mean there's something wrong with me, I have no value or there's something wrong with my congregation or my congregation's mission. Uh, and in the eyes of others, it's worthless. So they're, they're afraid of rejection. That's a good way to put it. Uh, on, the, on the donor's side, um, 
what's again the source of the fear is the fear that you will perceive as not giving enough and that would suggest that maybe you don't have adequate resources uh, to to give more maybe you're not doing well financially um, maybe you're too selfish so and, and again and then in, in the eyes of the uh, uh, of the world that would be like saying, I'm not financially secure enough to give, or I'm not charitable enough to give. There's something wrong with me. And again, you're afraid of criticism. So in, in both cases, uh, the problem is fear of being devalued by the other, by the other person on both sides, whether it's the asker or the giver. And if that's the case, if there's any truth in what now and uh, uh, thought about that, uh, the solution is simple and it's a bit harsh. It's simply get over it. Get over reliance upon the approval and affirmation uh, of the other person or, 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 or the, the other institution, whatever it is. Um, now that's hard to do. And now in being a Christian knew that you can't just get up in the morning and say, okay, I'm too dependent upon others' opinions of me. I'm too afraid of rejection. I'm too afraid of suspicion. I'm too afraid of hostility. Uh, and therefore I think I'll just stop. And from now on, I'm gonna grit my teeth, uh, exercise my willpower, and I'll be uh, a more self-reliant, self-content person not needing the approval of others. Well, now I knew you, you can't do that. He was a theologian. He was a spiritual guide. He was a, uh, a, a professor of, of uh, re the psychology of religion. So for, for all those reasons, he knew that that's not possible. So how do you get over yourself? How do you get over feeling like you need the approval of others? Well, now and concluded that the answer in Christianity is simply an awareness of God's grace. That if we knew and felt that God approves of us, that God values us, that God confers worth on us, that God loves us, and that that is unconditional and eternal, then we wouldn't so desperately need other people's opinions, uh, other people's valuation. Uh, we'd, so that we could become what he called jolly beggars. We could not uh, go, go up to another congregant if we were on the stewardship uh, team and say to ourselves, I really don't need this person to like me. I don't need this person to value me because I know God already does. And that's all I really need. The only approval I need is God's. The only love I need is God's really. Um, and therefore, whether this person accepts me or rejects me, whether they respond to my ask or don't, doesn't really matter. Uh, in the in the long run, in regard to my relationship with God, because I already have all the love I need, and therefore you can ask without fear, without fear of rejection. Uh, and now, in thought that that sense of God's love, of being loved by God, could be nurtured by prayer, by participating in the worship of the church, by contemplation that we all have access to God's love. And if we only avail ourselves of that, then we wouldn't fear rejection. We wouldn't fear asking somebody to pledge to the church and being rebuffed. Uh, and we wouldn't fear uh, looking like we don't have enough money because our pledge was so small. Uh, we, we, we don't even fear uh, looking like we're uncharitable uh, because we know God loves us. So that was Nouwen's uh, solution to almost every human problem. Just get in touch with the fact that God loves you and that's not contingent upon what other people think of you. And for him, that was very liberating and that that should be the basis of all uh, stewardship. Um, and he thought when that happens, when somebody knows that God loves them, then you can ask without fear of rejection and you can give without fear of criticism. And that that, itself becomes a bond of community. Say, well, we're, we're, we're both beggars in need of God's love. We know that 
so let's band together and pool our resources and cooperate with one another to spread this word that God loves humanity, to spread the gospel uh, throughout the congregation and throughout the world. So, so that in a nutshell was Nowen's stewardship uh, theology. That is wonderful. So it is a spiritual issue. It is a spiritual problem. It's not the just the pragmatism of right. it. What a wonderful thank you for this message that um, just seems obvious, but it is not. And it's so essential. Thank you. Thank you. And I appreciate your time.